Ladies and gentlemen, it is I. One with the force. <laughs> Should have thought of a name. Fingers. I have a name. My name is Darth Brooks. Darth Brooks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Darth Because with this hood on, I look like a little bit like I'm a Jedi or possibly a Sith Lord. Mm-hmm. And I command you to watch us here on the greatest podcast in the universe for the point oh 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 one percent of the global population. This is the I Would Be Down show. It is me, Chris Soriano, joined by the effervescent, the well-groomed. Yeah. Look at it. Look, look at, at that this. beautiful face. Look at it. The, look oh, at it. The kawaii Dr. Joseph Seward. Future mm. doctor, sorry. Future doctor Joseph Seward. I and like both it. of us now have no... <laughs> You're what? you're a you're a true Jedi right now. <laughs> and I was like, you can't. I'm now I'm John Cena. Like you can't see me. You can't see me. <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't. What is wrong with our autofocus today? This is crazy. I don't know. It's always bad for me. I'm not even moving. <laughs> I know. Neither am I. It's ridiculous. So we were talking about right before we hit record about your uh, your office chair. Yeah. And how we were talking about how you know for the majority. Like we passed thirty seconds. Yeah, that most uh, that most gaming chairs are bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yes, one hundred percent. Because I recognize the the back on that. Because I I'm using like a a several hundred dollar office uh, office yeah. chair. I don't have the headrest, but I'm okay because I don't think I I'm normally yeah I'm normally not sitting back doing that. If I did, I'd probably fall asleep. But, oh, for um, sure. But you have that uh, that office chair, I think, from Staples, the Hiking, which is you know, about one hundred fifty oh, yeah. bucks. Yeah, and, wow, uh, you know the name of it. Yeah, I've been I've been doing some research. Dang. That is that is my thing. I'm a researcher, so. Yes, same. Uh, Victoria research chairs for weeks and weeks, and then I'm we telling went, you, bro. When we went and bought them, because we bought one for her, one for me, mm-hmm. we sat in different chairs probably for three hours, maybe not that long. It felt like three hours. We were. That's a long debating time, on brother. which chairs to buy yeah no but it's good it's good because it's you're the one sitting in it for hours at a time so you true. might as well true i like it victoria doesn't i don't think she likes them because uh it messes with her back but she's got back really problems, so yeah well they, they sell things for that at least so yeah but i mean it's yeah. like you, you go and you see a gaming chair for like you know a hundred dollars you're oh, like oh yeah. great and then you sit in it it's got like that nasty polyurethane upper yeah. uh-huh. you know the the unbreathable mm fake pleather without the butt vents and you're just like they're not comfortable no they're not comfy they're 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 thin pads of just crap with plastic armrests and but they look cool no (laughs) no (laughs) is that that that's like the marketing of it right like they look cool and like right no even the secret secret lab even the secret lab ones are like 300 bucks right yeah no it's like that's insane it's insane you could and get the worst part is such is a that nice chair for that much. You could, but the thing is, is like Logitech makes a chair, right? They mm. they made a chair to um, compete against the Herman Miller, the Aeron. Okay. Um, it's called it's it has actually have like it has vertebrae on the back. If I had if I would remember, oh. I would have done. But it's made mostly out of plastic. But it's okay. like nine hundred bucks, and I'm just like, no, it's just ridiculous. That's really I'm bad. Just, I am not down. I am not. I'm down not down. I'm like, if chairs. if you're spending that much on a chair. You spend too much time in a chair. <laughs> Unless you specifically have a reason True. to be in one, I would just be like, you might as well just dance, get a get a love sack or something like that. Just right. get a bean bag. There you go. I always like to tell. I always like to tell people there's only two things you really got to spend your money on in this world, and it's shoes and a bed. Because if you're not in one, you're in the other. That's true. Spoken like a true future doctor. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of what doctors do. Oh, that's a controversial topic, my friend. I know. Well, so we, when we're trying to research and find content for the show every week, it's like we always find specific themes. And in this case, it always comes out to an interesting theme, except for maybe the pilot episode where, you know, we talked about vagina incense. But at the same time, last week it was was office spaces, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And and, and stuff like DIY office, like stuff like that. And this week, after putting it together, I'm just going to come out and say it. This week's themes are about people. Okay, okay. People. 
Interesting. As, as in, you know, things that we found that affect you as people. So with that said, we're going to jump right in. Let's do it. First topic. Oh, before I do that, I'm so sorry. We got to plug the subreddit. Oh my gosh. Reddit.com slash r slash I would be down. Join the revolution. Join become, it. Come become one with. Let me put my let me put my my hood back on since I'm Darth Brooks. <laughs> become one with become the I would be one, down. You will join our subreddit. <laughs> there you go. There we go. I like it. Good, good. Give in to your feelings. <laughs> That is, that is a Sith thing, right? So you're Darth. So that's why you're saying give in to your feelings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give like in to it. your feelings. I've always so. been more of like a Jedi kind of person, but it's fine. You know, it I, I have you have you watched the last one? Yeah, Number I've seen nine? them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I am of that ilk that you can be um, oh, a like tweener. A, a tweener. Right. You're, just a, you're, you're a force feeler. You know who you know? Ahsoka Tana is, right? No. You don't know that? Oh. Did you watch the um, the Clone Wars TV show? You know, I have. Um, I no, She's I've the one seen... with the, the the weird, like, two oh, hair I'm, things. Oh, I'm sorry. You said, you said uh, 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 I'm sorry. You mean, yes. you mean Shorty? Yeah. Yeah, Shorty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, like, I don't know if you know much of the lore. Yes, of course I do. Yes, I don't know if you know much of the lore, but she um, gave up her Jedi. Right. Thing and then like, yeah, she left. Like, throne. Yeah, right. I like where she stands. I'm, have you watched The Mandalorian? I've seen the first season. I need to see the second season. Oh, okay. Mm, you should definitely watch the second yeah, season. Yeah, I, I, I need to. I definitely need to watch it. But yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Ahsoka Tano, and, and her yeah. fighting style is so dope. Spoiler. Have seen, have well, seen maybe Rebels? not. Mm. Uh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rebels yeah. is good too. It's yeah. like the, the kid who makes the gun save. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So, Anyways, back to people. People. <laughs> <laughs> I the would be weekly Star tan Wars all day. Same. The weekly tangent. There we go. So we're gonna talk about new 3D model. Who this? Project oh, Starline. So that's a nice picture, right? Yeah. So you talking to let's talking to your let's talking to your grandma, maybe? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, you know, a relative or something like that. Yeah. So there's something special about this this person. They're not alive. Close. Okay. They're a three D model. So this week, uh, for anyone who isn't a technologist, this is the Google I O week, which means that they have uh, their annual web develop not web but their annual development conference for Google products. Uh, if you're a Google developer, um, last year was canceled because of the pandemic, obviously. So this year they they decided to do one, and it's it's all virtual. Um, like it was two years ago. And uh, basically, this is a project they started several years ago, according to uh, Google CEO Sundar Pichai. And basically, this is from Google's actual blog. Basically, it's they, what they've done is they've created, uh, see how they're talking to this person mm -hmm. right there? Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're really talking to them. Yeah. They're actually talking to a 3D model. Is it like a physical? Yeah model like you could touch them i don't think you can touch them but you can actually see them so let me weird let me see so yeah this person is a 3d model that they've created kind of like a, kind of like an, an emoji on, on ios okay okay but yeah they've uh they use like yeah basically they they're using machine learning um spatial audio real-time compression and they're using and basically i think the, the display is part of it so basically, someone's sitting at one end of it, mm -hmm. and you're sitting at the other. And I'm guessing that I'm guessing I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing yes. that this screen yes. has something to do with it. So um, ultimately, when you're and it's almost like looking at somebody with like a 3D lens, or if you're like you talking right. to someone in like with a VR helmet on. So right. the thing about this is that uh, yeah, they're you're seeing a, a 3D image of this person in real time. So basically, it's different. Why? For me, it's like. You look pretty. You yeah, look pretty good. Yeah, you look like three D to me. I look. Yeah, look. Look at my. Look at. Yeah. Look, oh my god. I'm. Oh my god. I'm translucent. But anyway, <laughs> you know this. I yeah. don't think I look too different. I don't see um, how this is different from a webcam. Okay, so so that's the thing too. So in the in the 
I think the, 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 the argument they're making is that seeing somebody with this much resolution, with this like 3D look, makes the conversation a little bit more personal. Mm. because working from home and just being being remote for so long um, it kind of takes away from the i guess the personal nature of, of, of the transaction in terms of communicating with somebody right I so guess. something like this helps uh, it just helps with with making the experience more real okay um, so do you just buy the screen and like the screen it renders you or do you have to go get rendered first? <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, right? So this is a, this is a special light field display system. If you look at this, uh, see how there's like a box right here and he's sitting yeah. up and, and there's, there's all this light being emitted through this oh. screen, which I'm guessing there's all kinds of sensors that sit around it and it measures you and tries to render all of that in real time. And then it sends it, through whatever they have it going through it, it it's still they've been using it for several years internally at google apparently so oh. this is really just more of a interesting it's really just more of a yeah so basically they're trying to use the so not not to sound uh, I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but like old people, or like maybe not, maybe not old people, but like technologically challenged people. This just seems like it's going to be a big pain in the butt. It could be, yeah. But do you think if you were to see like more shadow, more like like if you look at this, you would actually think like from a gimmick standpoint, that person is literally person's, sitting right. six feet away from you. But right. at the same time, it's like it would be one thing if we were. If we were sitting side by side. Yeah. Like if they found a way to, to, if they found a way, but then it sounds like you're looking in a confessional or something like that. Right. You're, like, you're like this. And then you and me are talking. <laughs> so how was your day today, Chris? <laughs> Mine too. It was great. Um, so. <laughs> but to I, get I, that, that 3D look, I get, like I said, I get it, but at the same time. I don't know if I'd be willing to pay thousands of dollars. Yeah, for, like, what, is there a price on it yet? Not from what I've seen. Um, they're okay. working with uh, they're working with partners to um, specifically get. I think these are all prototypes because they're only using it internally. Meaning, and Google has, you know, offices all offices all over the world, so they're using this right. Project Starline to mm. just kind of have more meetings. Um, with more of this 3D kind of look to it. So. Right. I mean, I think it's it's definitely a cool concept. I just don't yeah. know how it's that much more revolutionary than what you and no, I are doing right and it'd now. be cooler if, like, you... Maybe... Maybe it'd be cooler if you were in VR and you could sit yeah. there and have somebody next to you or get that feeling that someone's sitting, like, right True. in front of you or something like that. That would be, that would be different, I think. Right. Um, have you ever watched the movie, uh, I think it's called Upload? Yeah. Yeah, it Amazon, reminds right? me. Yeah, it reminds yeah, yeah. me of this. Yeah, or is it a yeah, TV I, show? I'm not sure. But um, no, it's a well, it, yes, it's a series. Yeah, that show. Yeah, I would, I I'd would think that watch that has it a briefly. lot to do with it. Yeah. So, uh, so I guess, yeah. Would you, would you be down for something like this? Uh not in my house. No. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't think I'd pay say, for something like that. Hmm. I think it's a cool concept. I think that there's probably some people that it might benefit, but. I'm fine with the webcam. Me too. Or phone call. Well, so speaking of phones and, and apps that you use on your phone, do you use Snapchat? Uh, no. Yes. No. Do you use, um, do you, do you, when you use video chat, do you use those filters? No. No. Do your kids use those filters? Uh, they do when they get around to it, but they don't normally do it. No. Well, Why so really I'm going to segue that? to our next, mm -hmm. our next, uh, our next find here on the Ooh. I Would Be Down show. So that's like the one thing that I can tell you I actually do use about Snapchat. You know, you, you'll take a picture and you like, you open your mouth and rainbows come out. Yeah, right. Or you get the funny things on the hats and people take those funny pictures where their face is all. Mm, right, right. You know? um, but I found something. I was like, this is the reason I really would have used Snapchat. And it's really just more 
selfish. No, not not even selfish, but how I would personally use Snapchat. Because see, the thing about Snapchat, there's a lot of interesting things about Snapchat in terms of why it works. Um, Because it started out as a way for for people to communicate, Mm -hmm. but the the interface is so unintuitive. I guess is the best word to use. Okay. Yeah. Like if you had no idea. Very like simple. You, well, no, it, it's hard. Oh, you think because, it's hard? Oh, okay. Well, because I have no idea how it's supposed to work. And oh, neither right, do they right. tell you how it's supposed to work. That's mm-hmm. why kids were using it. Because they knew that if somebody came in, they're like, well, what do I do now? Whereas they're mm-hmm. like, slap, da, 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 you know? <laughs> fair, fair. So that's kind of the genius of it. Of okay. not telling you how it works. But for me personally, seeing these filters, really the only real reason why I probably use it is for the AR tools. <laughs> AR tools. Yeah. So, you know, when you use that, that's all, that's all augmented (laughs) reality is, right? Oh, right. right, When when I'm trying to get a picture of a hat, uh, of a cat sitting on my head, you know, or my face getting all morphed and, and my voice being (laughs) changed and all that kind of stuff. Uh Um, One thing that Snapchat is doing is that they're working with companies to get outfits. Oh. Um, For example, this try ons. So if, and this is this is more obviously this is more of a uh, an experimental feature, but there right. are companies who are interested. Um, for example, Prada in showing you the latest clothes in their collection, and then you could accessorize with different purses mm. that they're selling. Um, I could definitely see this for sneakerheads. Right, you, know, you just yeah. take a picture of your foot. You're like, yo, check out the latest kicks. Right. Um, how would that look on me? Although real sneakerheads already know how sneakers are going to look on them. Not, not people like me. I got a really funky foot. So it's like <laughs> half the shoes that are out there don't look good on my foot. <laughs> and I mean funky you got a in funky terms of shape. Foot. I got no. a funky foot. I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Yeah, my I- foot's shaped all weird. So it's like it, most shoes, they don't look right on me because the top of my foot's very large and wide. Hmm. I see that. I, I mean, I think we've talked about this before, this sort of market. I think there's a market for this mm-hmm. um, with like the glasses, you know, when people buy glasses now. They can, right. Yeah. And what, well, what we Warby talked Parker. about. Yeah. Last mm-hmm. week we talked about something where they could try it on. I think this is a great idea for businesses to do because especially with a lot of people that don't want to go over COVID or, you know, I think that the world mm-hmm. is just migrating to a buy online, get shipped to the house. And if you could see what it looks like you on you then i think it's great i don't know if i'll use it well because... one thing that i saw on here that i thought that was pretty interesting that i was just reading right now is like brands like mac cosmetics can learn which items colors and styles that their customers are are most um interested in with new you know right. analytics for mm. AR shopping so ultimately i think that's where the money is right is that yeah. you know stores like this it's like especially these brands you know that right now it's more of a direct to consumer kind of model mm-hmm. yeah how how do i know what people are going to buy they can tell by you know using the app and and having people look at the clothes give a rating based on what they saw get right. their opinion because sure why not right i mean it saves them money too right because they don't have to go to they don't have to sell it to some store they can just have them right. not even you don't even have to make them yet just have them mm-hmm. made to order I mean, I think this is great. I think it's a great idea, and I'm not surprised it's happening. But yeah, for me, this is the reason why I joined Snapchat. Yeah, it's like if if I had a shopping assistant that knew, you know, based on <laughs> yeah, because that when you look at yourself in Snapchat, you know, you have an approximation of your of your your measurements. I mean, if they can put a damn cat on your head, they can figure out how wide are my shoulders. True. You know, do a full body scan and figure True. out what clothes it. Because Amazon does it now with their um. I don't want to say it's, it's not Halo. There's another product that they have where they take a whole picture of your body and then they can they can recommend clothes to you based on your measurements. That's really smart. That's clever. It's scary as hell, but it's, it's yeah. scary. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So the thing is, is like, and that's the, I think maybe that's the other part too, right? It's like, do you want a company knowing everything about you from a measurement standpoint? Right. At what point does it, you know, at what point do they start taking that information and selling it or... You know well, what I mean? Yeah. Like they sell all, guess what? all your other information. All these products are free. Right. And if, if if you're watching this podcast right now and you don't know what that means, that means that if you're not paying for it, guess who the product is? 
You. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> you. So don't get it twisted. You are the product of the, if in that in that case. They're making money off of you. Yep. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Keeping it one hundred. <laughs> For the All point. Right. Oh, 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 one oh, percent. <laughs> global percentage, yes. Percent of the global population. That's right. Well, um, uh, I'm gonna, I, you know, based on that, I'm gonna jump on a, onto a different topic, because you mean you mentioned talking about, you know, shopping and all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, with the with what's happened with the pandemic, there's been so many changes in terms of how we shop as consumers, right? Right. Um, I mean, just down the street, there's a giant. There's movie theaters. There's all kinds of things that have closed. Because oh, wow. they didn't have they didn't have the money to stay open, obviously, because nobody's going. Right. Uh, so you see, shopping malls are just sitting there empty, right? Mm. Well, they're starting to make a comeback now. Um, but interestingly enough, the new tenants that are coming back are not big chains. Oh, really? No. In fact, according to this fintechology dot com article, not friend of the channel, but they could be if they wanted to. Small businesses are sliding back into malls, um, it's particularly uh, small startup businesses. So you're getting brands who are creating like pop-up stores. Mm -hmm. and malls are so desperate to get um, people brands, in. yeah, brands back into their uh, properties that they're willing to lower the rent. Um, for things that and and it's a lot of. DTC or direct to consumer brands. So right. um, you're looking at this pop up of uh, a store called Platform, and they sell, if I'm not mistaken, oh, let's see. Is that a mall? Oh my yeah, God. this is, this is, uh, this is at the, the Oculus. It's a, uh, it's a transport, I think it's like a subway stop in Manhattan. So oh, okay. not only is it a subway station or, a, or, an, or an elevated train station, they also have shopping, you know, obviously like, one-stop shop, right? Right. I feel like I've been there, but maybe not. Hmm. Well, this is brick and click. And basically they, they show merchandise that they have uh, based on uh, direct-to-consumer brands. And what's, what's fascinating about this is they've talked about it is that they'll actually have uh, stores make their pitches on social media in terms of advertising to local hmm. people. So right. they'll locally advertise and then they will, you know, have those products in the store the next day. So basically it's like, if you, if you like that, then you, um, just, you know, head out. Right. So yeah, they're trying to, they're trying to capitalize on people wanting to have more of a, an indoor experience. Obviously is now more people are now getting vaccinated and are starting to, you know, to get back to normal life, going indoors, um, right? Trying to, yeah, create pop-up villages. I guess is the, the word they used here. I like this. I think this is really smart because mm -hmm. all the like, like these startup businesses, they need to start somewhere, right. you know. And where's the best place for a lot of like these places to start is in malls, probably. Yeah, Teenage, especially teenagers most of these stores through. that were most of their anchors or whatever had to go out of business or right. something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. this is, I think we're going to see a big change in how shopping malls are being used. Um, and I welcome that. You're going to have to because if you go to a mall now, it's, it's stupid expensive for most things. And then you see like half the malls out of business. So No, I know. And, and the, the, the unfortunate thing is who's working there? Right, right. Right. That's kind of the issue right now. Right. Mm. I mean, right now, the big issue is, yeah, there's stuff going on, but nobody's working there. Right. Um, it's a shame. I'm down for that, though. I like that. There's also um, talking about malls. There's a I don't know the name of the company, but there's a couple companies that are uh, taking old malls and like turning them into like community centers. I have heard about that. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool, too. We'll, we'll have to revisit that. Yeah, I think that's and really find cool. out more about what people are doing in terms of uh, repurposing malls. So, right. Um, going into a more controversial topic based on that, uh, we're in a situation where, you know, minimum wage. <laughs> I don't know what it is over there in your state. 
but in this state, it's still, I think it's seven and a quarter. Hmm. Um, well, I'm going to look that up right now. Actually, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, $9 an hour, nine, nine, nine dollars an hour. It's seven and a quarter here in Georgia. Really? Yep. Really? When did they raise it to nine? I don't know. That's pretty the, nice. Well, though. the federal minimum wage is still seven and a quarter. Right. And ultimately, no one's going back to work because for whatever reason, I don't want to jump too far into it because I don't have hours to talk about it, <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but Costco is increasing their minimum wage to $16 next week. With that said, Costco has always been a, a place that you could work and have a good right. career. Right. Um, it's no different than other places such as Home Depot, such as Lowe's, who employ adults and give them benefits part-time, um, along with things like education, benefits, paid time off, things that you may or may not get at, at some smaller uh, or just just lower paying jobs like fast food or, 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 um, God, what I'm trying to think of, like maybe grocery stores or something like that. Uh, but there, there's people who are actually, I mean, this is a real thing. We could be in a situation where the minimum wage jumps to $15 quickly. Yeah. Uh, and with that said, I think the, the idea is mixed on how that's going to affect the economy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably, I don't know if it's an, infl if it, it's going to cause an inflationary move, um, com companies like Target and Amazon have already raised their, are already raising it to 15. So CEOs, I don't know, CEO Costco is trying to be, uh, better by going a dollar higher, I guess an hour, which is, it is what it is, right? I mean, right now businesses are com competing to get people in, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the market that they're in. So it's, it's interesting for sure. Um, Mark Cuban, I know mm. you, you probably know who that is. I do. I was watching a video and somebody asked him this question, minimum wage. And I don't know, I'm not going to do it any justice probably, but the way he described why he raised his minimum wage to $15 an hour for his businesses was because he felt that it was his job to make sure that his employees didn't have to go and seek aid outside of their own work, like for like food stamps or WIC or, you know, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he said that he believes that if, if he, if all of the people had that, then the amount of money that was put into those programs by the government would go down. Exactly. And then, so you get um, the, uh, the other gentleman in, in the Seattle area, I forgot, I can't think of his name right now. He's the guy who changed all of his, he reduced his salary to a dollar. Oh. And then gave every, all of his employees a raise to $70,000 per year. Did you see yeah, that? I think I know what you're talking about. I don't yeah, know who it is. but I forgot his name too. It's still there. Um, comment, guys, if you if you know. Yeah. Uh, and but, things are still good with him. Right. I, I The way that Mark Cuban described it, I thought, was really great. And I think that outlook is probably the best outlook for it. I'm not sure how I feel about right. it yet, but I, I, I lead more towards the minimum wage to be raised. But I'm I'm not going to be working in that. But I, you know, I'm not going to be working in that like at a minimum wage ever again. But I'm going to have people that are probably employed by me who will be close to that. So it's it's important to think about. I think I would be too. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't carry. Don't I currently don't have a business where I have employees. But if I did, I don't see a reason that I would pay them the federal minimum wage. Right. Right. Uh, mainly because. It just sucks. Why, right. why would you want to pay somebody $7 an hour to do mm -hmm. work that you yourself wouldn't do right? for that price? So, I mean, I guess the, the better question is what is the right price? And is well, is there a, a matter... set standard? Is like there, no. is there a gold standard? Like, can well, you 15... justify paying somebody that works at like a McDonald's 15, and but not someone that works at like an Applebee's 15 or even sales? Like if you worked at a, a Kohl's, Mm -hmm. Is it the same as working at a McDonald's? You I would know what think I mean? That I, I honestly would think it'd probably be more work at a McDonald's, to be quite honest. 
I, mean, I don't look know. At, look at look at In and Out. They 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 just raised, they've always paid more than right. thirteen dollars an hour in California. They they've just raised it um, in Southern California. I saw that they're paying between seventeen fifty and nineteen fifty an hour. Is it? I th I'm pretty sure California's minimum wage is fifteen dollars though. That I don't know. Um, I when I lived there, that for sure wasn't because I made <laughs> I made four twenty five an hour back in the year two thousand. So in January of twenty twenty. If you had more than 25 employees, it, was, it had to be $13 an hour. Really? Yeah, in California. Yeah, it's $13 an hour. Yeah. Well, it says 2021, it went up to 14. Mm. If you had 26 employees or more. If you but had 25 also, or fewer, it's only 13. Yeah, that's statewide, though, because obviously right. they have different areas. Like Right, for sure. Um because obviously, in certain parts of the of the country, it doesn't make in the country the, the state doesn't make sense to right. be working for that. In fact, the the and lowest one is looks like it looks like they're in the more rural areas um, that I can see that make right. fourteen. Yeah, Sonoma. Well, no, that's small. Large employers fifteen, small employers fourteen in Sonoma, which is north of San Francisco by about three hours. Right. Um, and then you got to think about it too. Like if you raise federal minimum wage to $15 an hour, you got to think of like people who live in the Midwest who live in a town where you can go get a four bedroom house for $50,000. That $15 an hour is way different than someone here in Atlanta who can't get a house because right. they're $300,000. Right. You know, it's, it's all very subject to where you live and how much, how much houses, homes cost so much gas cost well, if you think about it i mean you look at a place like i'm looking at hawaii for example 1010 is the wow is the minimum wage which is nuts considering that you have it's people living there. You, yeah you have people living eight to ten people a house in some cases right, right. in terms of in terms of uh, residents and native hawaiians so damn that's crazy yeah well anyway we could talk about this for hours but right i, I mean I, ultimately I, I think it comes to are you down to, I mean, I would be down to pay my employees more than the federal. I always would be. For sure. Um, I, I think it's, it's not, I think it's more on the business owner responsibility to make sure that their people can survive. Like if they're right. working for you, they need to be able to survive. Like how Mark Cuban says, if they can't survive, then they're not going to, one, they're going to be working efficiently for me. Right. And then two, they're going to have to be always worrying about when they're going to next meal or how are they going to get money to pay for their kids' new shoes and that kind of thing. Yeah. So as, as a person who's going to be owning a business eventually, probably as a chiropractic business, I feel that it's going to be my responsibility to make sure that my people are going to be able to, to survive. Good on but you, it, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you. Well, we're going to, we're going to keep on this. Oh, topic yes. of somewhat controversial things. Um, you know, speaking like of it. speaking of the pandemic. Um, Future of mRNA, huh? I know you're gonna have a thought on this. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, there's it's so polarizing. You know, you get people like Alex Jones on InfoWars who you know, slaps a pile of papers saying that you shouldn't get the mRNA vaccine because, you know, you might die in a year and there's studies mm -hmm. being shown that people in 10 years have, you know, irreversible brain damage and stuff like that. And, you know, just all of this, all of this rhetoric that, you know, people are like, if you got your vaccine, you're not welcome here because you're shedding your, your symptoms onto the rest of us and all that kind of stuff. And I'm fully vaccinated. Uh, I, I am, I have lots of underlying conditions or rather I take that back. I am at higher risk for amino compromisation because of, of my health. Mm -hmm. uh, Stan, are you, did you get, did you get your vaccine? Yet? No, no. And I will not be. Okay. Is that just a personal choice? Or? Yeah. I, it's just a personal choice. It's standpoint on vaccines in general. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yep. Um, so when it comes to vaccine technology, uh, MRNA is different, obviously, mm -hmm. um, because traditional vaccines, you know, like for example, the flu shot, um, in general contains the actual, or at least some of the flu, mm. 
And then basically your body takes that in and then creates some sort of immunity to that. Right. Uh, mRNA is different because the way that mRNA works is it, it works as a protein that goes into cells based on an instruction and fights, you know, whatever, whatever it pretty much becomes a shield. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. So basically now that Moderna has created this vaccine and, and to, to be fair, they've had this vaccine developed for more than 18 months, I want to say. So essentially, cause they've had, cause they've had the vaccine since January, I think of 2020 or 20, wait, what do we, yeah, January, 2020, once the, once the issue of, you know, the, the breakout in China happened, they've, they've had a vaccine for a while. Uh, and actually this is not new technology either. MRNA vaccines have been around forever. Well, not forever, but at least for a decade. So they've been using it to fight all kinds of diseases. So really the only reason why I brought this up is because now that they've made a name for themselves in terms of COVID, and interestingly enough, it has no trace of the virus in the actual vaccine. Right. There wouldn't be. There wouldn't be. How, right. I mean, for, for most people, you know, so ultimately when you have this vaccine, um, it's basically an instruction set that lives inside you and helps your body fight at, like a shield, whatever is out there. That's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, I would explain it differently than that, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Like as in like what it actually does inside your body. Right. Right. I mean, I but think it's, it's for people who don't, inside. yeah. People who don't have like a scientific background, that's mm -hmm. a good example. Or it's a good, it's, way it's to a good it. enough example, right? Right, 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 right. right. Um, in fact, uh, there's a nasal treatment from Ohio State University that I don't have queued up um, that they're trying to get patented, or not patented, but approved by F by the FDA. Oh, and wow. basically, it's a nasal spray that the the proteins inside the spray go into your lungs, and they mm -hmm. actually prevent connection. Um, to the sites in the lungs by the virus itself. So basically okay. the spike that's on that, obviously the, you can see the spike here on the, I don't right, think this right. is the actual coronavirus. No, but, that's... Um, but in any, in, in essence, the, the issue there is that um, it, it essentially blocks it from making a connection to these cells that can then, gotcha. you know, gotcha. mutate and multiply and whatnot. And it's, uh, yeah, it's all very interesting. Um, yeah. I think that that alone is very interesting because if it's blocking a connection to something, it's blocking something else from connecting to it. So then my question would be, what is normally connecting to the same spots because that COVID is connecting to? You know what I mean? It's a good question. And then is it blocking that? And how is that going to affect you? How is but that going to affect specific I, people? I think it's, uh, I think it's again, with the, with the mRNA piece, it's training your body to fight the infection. Right, right. The so, mRNA is, is completely mm -hmm. different. It's, it's, it's basically giving you proteins inside. It's the idea behind it is to give you proteins to fight off the virus, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. to denature the virus. Right. And also to, in time... If it, if it finds more in there, like I said, I, I, I don't know enough about how long it lasts in your system, how long it gives you the, right. Right. The, the response for, um, but with treatments like this, you could probably mitigate this and other diseases because they're actually, right. I don't know if it's in here, but, um, they're trying to go after some cancers now as well. Oh, wow. Because the issue with cancer is that Zika once virus. it is Zika, well, I mean, they're looking at SARS. Uh, SARS especially, but they're mm -hmm. looking at, at cancers now because obviously, you know, with cancer, generally you have cells that have mutated to a point where they continue to grow and run right. out of control. Right. So if you're able to create a um, mRNA vaccine that can fight that. Um, Very interesting. Yeah. And it's basically, you can, what, what's, what's neat about these disease, uh, because they're just instruction sets, it's kind of like code and I'm a programmer. So th that, that resonates with me. Right. Right. Um, you create a program and then you can just make it. So it protects against like literally you, your body is, your body is a very complex computer, obviously. Very, very complex. <laughs> so being able to, to do that, um, it's very, very interesting. Yeah. I mean, all these things are very, uh, 
much a risk reward kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, because they could do as many studies as they want. And I think, I mean, the more studies, the better, clearly, but it doesn't mean that that's exactly how it's going to react to you or how you're going to react to it. Right. And everybody's so, had a different reaction. Right. Right. So if you, if these do continue to go and like people who are like the first ones to try them, um, just make sure that like, if you are one of those people, just like do a lot of soul searching and your research on your own, just mm -hmm. don't let other people tell you what you should do because it's your body ultimately. And if something happens, it's not them that have to suffer. It's you. So, right. And we all, we, especially with these, with these instruction sets, we're all going to be, I mean, it's interesting because I was thinking about it in a, in a way, obviously it, it kind of reminds me of cyberpunk, cyberpunk 2077 with these mods, mm -hmm. you know, at what point do, at what point do, do people create MRNA vaccines that actually, um, change the way your body just fully processes things right right like the moment the moment they come into cybernetic implants and stuff like that then you have these mrna vaccines that can help enhance them in some way mm -hmm. like with like a new heart or something like that i think that would be right the the craziest thing with like this kind of thing is a lot of people me included are never going to truly know what is going on inside the body with them because we don't mm -hmm. have that scientific background of studying microbiology for years and to figure out exactly how to create this vaccine and what exactly all goes into it. So thank you. Right. Saying my it. sister, my sister is a molecular biologist by trade. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah. She's, she's all, she's all for the science behind this. So um, generally if she's good with it, then I'm pretty good with it. Cool. Um, Cause she deals with, she deals with this stuff on a daily basis. Right. I mean, right. She's got billion dollar machines that are behind her that <laughs> can, can, uh, you know, analyze the results of all this kind of stuff. Right. For and, sure. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm interested to see where this goes. I think there's definitely, um, it's important for specific people, I think for sure. And then it's, especially in uh, underdeveloped countries where sanitation, um, and cleanliness is not as high here and nutrition's mm -hmm. not as high. Um, but thankfully not only has this brought light to, uh, a lot of things like sanitation wise in this country, but it's also brought light to nutrition and how important exercise and nutrition is as well. So it's, that's true. It's very good. There's a lot of good things that have come out of COVID, even though there's been a lot of bad too. So, yeah. I can only hope, I can only hope that, uh, because there's always going to be something worse on the horizon, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I can only hope that, you know, with the breakthrough of mRNA, um, which ironically, mRNA is Moderna's stock symbol. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't know that that it's really weird. Uh, but in any case, uh, I can only hope that that this technology that they're using now will be helpful in curing everything right you know maybe this is the way to i mean if this can if this can block the coronavirus could this block hiv um, well i guess they, i guess they're doing all kinds of treatments to 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 prevent hiv to becoming full-blown aids mm -hmm. um, but at some point you know with the with the way that this works around t-cells could it could it stop it i don't know we we're, we're i'm i'm down to find out there you go i'm down to find out for sure Okay, so back to people. I guess we, we've 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 tech, we've technically I mean, it's still, people. that's a people topic, right? Yeah, it's a people topic. Yeah. Um, if there is so, you know, you I I know you've been uh, you've been going out and getting dinner for yourself this for the past week or so. I mean, that's a <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> how how often are you annoyed that people get your order wrong? Um, well, we can put it this way. I check and make sure that the, uh, sauce that I have in my bag is in my bag every time I order, because if it's not, I'm upset. So pretty often I, I, I am a very regular checker at the window to make sure everything's there as you should be. Yeah. Right. Or like, I mean, yeah, if you're going fast, food you'll stuff, be yeah. surprised. Like I remember when I, for obviously for, for accuracy standpoint, um, 
when I was uh, when I was younger, I used to eat a lot of twenty piece of McNuggets at McDonald's. Ooh, mm. you'll be surprised how many times I don't get twenty McNuggets. That's, in that's my box. frustrating. It's frustrating. <laughs> and I I know that the value prop is pretty is you know twenty yeah. less than twenty cents a nugget. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, it's like I ordered twenty nuggets. I want twenty for my five dollars. Right. Oof, God, hard to believe that you can get twenty nuggets for five for less than five dollars. Burger King can get 20, 10 nuggets for a buck forty nine. I know it's really bad for you, but if you're in a pinch, I mean, hey, if you're hungry and you're in a pinch, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. They need to make stores that uh, sell broccoli or something like that. Uh, you know, I gotta be quiet because Victoria's thinking of some stuff, and I don't want to like ruin her thing or give someone else the idea first. So fair enough, fair enough. Computer burgers, computer burgers. Oh, this is... I don't know why that I wrote that because I was thinking of that song, old song, Computer Love. Um, so the uh, in terms of computer burgers, this really is just talking about how people are are serving your food, right? Oh, Lee's famous restaurant in Ohio. Personally, I've never been there, but if you're familiar with <laughs> Lee's famous chicken, nope, they have now swapped out. Uh, I'm sorry, not swapped. They've implemented a conversational AI at the drive through window. Oh, that sounds even more annoying. Well, essentially, uh, you, you, you really don't know, but it's no different than, okay, so when you pull up to, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of a rest. Well, for sure, Burger King has it. Well, they'll play an announcement. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then you're talking. And then, for the most part, you know they have a they have a screen that tells you what you ordered. Right. So for the most part, it's like if I order and my order shows up correctly on the on the screen, is, am I good with that? Uh, Generally, I am. I'm good with that. They heard what I wanted. Right. But that doesn't mean that they're going to put it in the bag. Well, so the idea is that because they have this uh, this particular order ordering AI that only goes to a drive through assistant in the event that you ask a question right. that its training model does not know. Oh. So basically they will, they will respond to you with however many thousand right. combinations that you have. Hmm. And basically um, it's fast because it already knows what you're looking for. You verify, and then your order pops up on the screen immediately. So you can you can have your employees working more at fulfilling yeah. orders and getting that efficiency up in that point. Um, I, I just worry, you know, like those phone calls that you make to like any big company now, and you got to go through the automated thing first, and then half the time the reason why you're calling doesn't get answered by the automated, and you got to talk to somebody anyways. That's oh, yeah. what I fear. But I think this is a really cool idea. Well, it helps, right? Right. Yeah. I you think. know, so it's like if not, not that it had, well, I'm, and, and I mentioned that because of obviously the minimum wage thing, but at the same time, it's like, uh, if I'm in a situation where I can be more efficient because right. I have a system taking care of that, it's the main reason why companies have, they have phone systems, right? With IVR right. systems that handle mm -hmm. your, because why pay an operator to sit there and route the call inefficiently, especially if multiple calls are coming in. Right. When you can have a system automatically steer people in the correct direction. So true, true. I do think that's what this this uh, this particular AI solution does. And what's interesting is that this is at a fairly small regional chain. Right. So it's not like it's at like McDonald's or something like that. This is this is being used by a smaller business, and and apparently it's working. I think they've mentioned that their average drive through times. Nope, nope, nope. That's not correct. Increased by nearly 30 seconds. Yeah. And especially with, uh, you know, people, services like DoorDash and Grubhub and stuff like right. that, ordering yeah. in a drive through So being able to to mitigate those those orders quickly and help people yeah. get to what they, they want to order, I think, is, is fairly important. So. All right. You've convinced me. Yeah. You've convinced me. I would be down. You'd be down? Yeah. You'd be down to use the, yeah. the computer burger? I think it would be faster. And like you're saying, it's just faster. Like you say what you want, it pops mm -hmm. up. And if it's right, 
It's right. I think that there's going to be some times where it might not recognize what you're saying, and that might be annoying for certain people. Which, for the but... most part, because it's a machine learning platform, it right. gets better. It right. learns as, exactly. you, as you go. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the scary part is when you... The scary... Well, not the scary part. Let's say the more interesting part is in the event that you come up, there's a QR code, you scan it from your app, it already knows who you are at that point, and then loads up your order and says, hey, this is what you ordered last time. Do you want the same thing? That's scary. <laughs> that's... But but that's the next evolution, right? Right, right. I mean, we better start getting paid for our information then. <laughs> well, what, do I what did I tell you? When you're using a free app, guess who the product is? You. you. <laughs> <laughs> we need to start getting paid. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Nope. We're already getting paid from our twenty dollar an hour job, right? There you go. So yeah, that so essentially, um, does it say where in Ohio this is? No, I'm curious about it though, because I, I I would love to try it out. Um, apparently, it's powered by Road Intel. Trip. <laughs> I know, right? It makes it's, sense. It's available as an Intel and an Intel IoT market solution. So interesting, interesting segue on that. Um, um, the majority of these uh, services already have uh, restaurants already have some sort of uh, quick, ready, efficient machine learning platform right. um, in their either in their point of sale service. Uh, for example, if you go to Burger King, there's a uh, a free what's it called free cycle not free cycle. What is that that Coca Cola thing? Oh, the um... Freestyle, Cola Freestyle, yeah, right, right. Those are all. Those are all smart machines. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, they they have makes sense though. They have an internet connection independently built into them, and they can monitor to the drop how much syrup is left of any combination they have in there, oh and they gosh. can make and they can make their own service call to call someone out when they are below a particular threshold based on the sales that are already being. Uh, pushed in from the point of sale service hmm that's weird um i mean it's, it's cool the, it's cool right and i only yeah. know this because i i learned all this when i went to an it leadership conference uh and we were learning about both internet of things and how apis work which is an application programmer interface uh for example in mcdonald's when you the reason why um, a franchise's fee is a million dollars if you want to own a McDonald's, the reason why your franchising fee is so high is not only you're paying for the brand, you're also paying for the technology. Right, right. The point of sale systems, the smart menu boards. The moment you put a, a, a restaurant down, you can have them up and running on the entire McDonald's network in less than 24 hours. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That With this crazy. whole system that's oh completely smart, has full inventory and order management all built in. Only if they could uh, serve orders that fast. <laughs> they might with this AI thing. <laughs> True. But, I, but True. it's not always perfect. Like I can, I right, can tell you with sure. the, from experience, the order from the kiosk function just sucks half the time. <laughs> so I'm curious as did this, uh, this chain of restaurants go to mm -hmm. Intel or did Intel try and just Google some small chain that's sort of famous in a small town is like we're gonna try this here to see if it works. You know what it's I mean? Probably. Well, the name of the company that that created the model is High Auto. Um, oh, that's the okay. Name of the, the, that's the name of the company who created the AI solution. They probably just kind of thought of it and thought, well, let's try it here. Right. Um, right. Specifically for whatever reason, but it's interesting because it's part of the Intel IoT hmm. uh, platform. What's right. interesting is now that looking solution. here, they're adding Spanish language. Yeah, let me Ooh. think about how quickly think about how quickly you can train train that to go in multiple languages now. Super quick. And a lot of people in this like this country is just gonna keep getting more and more diverse, especially with language. Mm -hmm. Um and the fact the ability to be able to service somebody that doesn't speak English and you don't have anyone that speaks nope. their language, it's gonna be great. Well look at the uh, was it Microsoft's? Microsoft was uh, had a technology where they were translating uh, traditional Mandarin in real time. That's really cool. Isn't that crazy? That was three That's years ago. Really that was cool. more than three years ago that they had that technology. 
Wow. So it's like I know I, I've seen I've seen um, history being made. Yeah, well, YouTubers who are in in other countries and they work there and they just walk around. If they have an issue, they just pull up their phone and just say what they want, and then they hold it up and it's in perfect, right, in real time. Oh, yeah. And I'm just yeah. like, I mean, this that's the world we live in. There's all kinds of technology around us. There's technology coming into us. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only a matter of time. I mean, I I mean, one thing we didn't talk about something I'm down for, which I have because I have type two diabetes. They um they have created nanobots. Right. That uh, that can carry insulin inside your bloodstream. Mm-hmm. That uh, I don't know how long they live for, but they or how long they what what powers them, but they can just sit in your bloodstream. And in the event that they they can tell that there is an intolerance or there's an amount of insulin resistance or your blood sugar is above a certain level, they can release instru- insulin to the bloodstream to help regula- regulate your blood sugar. That is interesting. And they're smart enough to, to output to an interface that you have like on some device, whether it be your phone or some sort of other device that can talk to the, that can communicate with the nanobots. That is very interesting. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, technology is, technology is nuts. Yeah, it is. They got all kinds of things going on. Hmm. So. Have you, um, there, I don't know what the name of the movie is, but I imagine Mm -hmm. this is probably going to come out soon. Like you have to, there are, in the movie, they're wearing this earpiece, and it translates everything real time, what they're mm-hmm. saying and what other people are saying. But they're all – it makes them feel like they're all saying the same language, like speaking the same language. I don't remember what movie it was. It was a space-ish movie. Mm. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't – that's all I got. But, yeah, I think that – I mean, I think that eventually will be a thing. Probably where you just have Probably. this ear, like a earphone, like a AirPod or something in your ear. And when you talk, the other AirPods pick up the language and then immediately translate it into oh, yeah, whatever absolutely. language you I, pick. I'll, I'll bet money that's out there now because you have. Yeah. Um, and what's better is that you can put it as like an ear cuff. Right. Uh, for example, like bone conduction headphones. Have you mm-hmm. used this before? I haven't, but I, I think that they're really cool. They are really cool. I, I'm still freaked out by the fact that they vibrate against your head. But at the same time, it's like if you were for like uh, like as a translator or just going somewhere where right. you don't know the language, that it can actually listen to it and process it. And even if it gave it to me at a, at a two-second delay. Right. Yeah. What's crazy about that is that you can still hear it, but still hear everything on the outside as well because it doesn't block the ambient noise from coming into your ear. Right. That'd be really cool. I think that'd be really cool to teach people the language too. Yeah, that to me, I think that's the coolest part. Like, uh, mm-hmm. I use Duolingo because I'm sixteen point seven percent fluent in Spanish. Not as much anymore, but I'm, I'm still. What a fluent. number! Sixteen point seven. That's what my app told me, so I'm gonna go with that. Okay, future doctor. <laughs> this the app does not numbers never lie. If oh, ESPN man. has taught me anything, it's numbers never lie. <laughs> Duolingo says I'm sixteen point seven percent fluent. Fluent. There you go. Let's hear something. Let's hear something. What do you got? Yo tengo shopping malls. <laughs> okay. Yo tengo computer burger. There you go. There we go. Is it we're talking about? Or? Um, how about mi mano, mi manos es naranja. Oh, your hand. My hand. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They're orange. Entiendo un poco. There we go. See? Yeah. See? See? <laughs> I know very little, very little. Probably like, probably like point zero 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 one percent. Poco, 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 yeah. poco. Mm-hmm. yeah. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Give in to your feelings. Give in. You will watch. <laughs> Order your burgers through the computer burger. All our vaccines will cure you. <laughs> there we you program go. them all to kill everything inside you. That would kill you. I'm just waiting. <laughs> I I'm just waiting for the. I'm just waiting for the 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 sexual health vaccine. Sexual health vaccine. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Like so, men stop getting like. Uh, what's it called? Just just vaccine. Like like when we like I said with the whole nanobot thing. Like mm-hmm. you have these you have these uh, these nanobots that go down and they can sense your your body arousal index. You know, obviously mm. that'll be a thing in a couple years. 
Mm. Um, and they can sense like you have uh, you have an interface like obviously with Neuralink, which is what Elon Musk company has. Right, right. Um, that can send a command down to the nanobots in your crotchal region that, hey, he's uh, he's aroused amongst a, over a particular um, threshold. And then that'll talk to the nanobots to then fill the member with 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 uh, with the, the fluid or the blood to get him to that to that status. At what point do we stop becoming human? Well, my camera doesn't focus. You have a PS4, right? I do. Yeah. Have you ever played Detroit Become Human? No. So good. Yeah. Oh my God, so good. <laughs> okay. So good. The story on that is we're, it, it's mainly just it's mainly a story based game. Okay. Uh, with okay. with like and it, it's linear and not well based on the choices you make. There's a whole tree. Yeah. And you get points based off of, you know, how you fulfill the tree. Okay. Kind of okay. like, you know, with, uh, like with Civ, when you're finally done, you see yeah, the tree and how right. you get. Yeah. It's, it's, it's no different. But the story there is amazing to the point of hmm. when does an android become human? What, 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 what demands you to recognize something like that as sentient? Right. What about what becomes human? What, what makes human not human anymore? That's the thing, right? Well, what, 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 it, what is a human in terms of, I don't know. See, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Is, is, is a, is a right. human someone who is able to have free will, free thought, and the ability to make mm. their own decisions based on the, uh, stigma in front of them? Mm. Okay. Okay. Don't know. I was thinking more of, from a biological standpoint of like a, a healing standpoint. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. You like have, if, you if have to think about that. Right. If you're chock full of nanobites that heal for you, I mean, your body is very good at um, adapting to what you have. So if you, for like, in, for instance, like if you didn't have type two diabetes and you got the nanobots that produce insulin mm -hmm. for you, you would develop, you'd probably develop type two diabetes because your body would no longer be able, would no longer think that it needs to develop insulin because the nanobots are doing it for you. Well, they're 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 meant to can, they're meant to help you in your aid. I don't okay. think they're meant to take over, but they're meant right. to, they're there as a right. Yeah. But in theoretic, like just theoretically, like if you put nanobots in your body that were there with you forever, right, and their whole purpose was to produce insulin, then eventually you would stop producing it biologically, or I don't know the right word, but you would stop producing it. Because your body would be like, okay, well, I don't need to waste energy on this because it's already the f the need is already fulfilled by something else, right? So, at what point, if you had one that's like nanobots suddenly made blood for you, or you know, can they though? I don't. And I'm, I'm. This is all hypothetical stuff. <laughs> like at that point, is it you know blood? what I mean? If it's not I, that's what I'm saying. Because doesn't what makes that's what I'm does this does the spleen make blood? No, you no, it's no, it's made in your your bones mostly. So the marrow, bones, yeah. the marrow creates the red blood cells that becomes. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. See what I'm saying though? At what point yeah. are you, at what point are, are you no longer human? Yeah. I mean, you're going to be living, but I think that's an interesting, it wouldn't be like an evolutionary change, but it would be an interesting change in the species because if you had people that didn't buy into all that stuff and just refused to do it. Um, and then the people that did, and then, I mean, they could still probably uh, mate together, you know? So what? how does that, you know, that's just a very interesting oh, thing based to think on about. My, based on my example of having the 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 implants and what the neural link to the implants, right. the nanobots in, in my penis. Yeah, mm. right. It's, just very, it's a very interesting, like, I'm sure we might not live for that long. No. Um, but who knows? Maybe in like 50 years, there makes some new invention that extends your life. <laughs> forever because i know that there's probably people out there trying to do that yeah you get you know? guys who get keep getting plastic surgery to have their 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 face like pulled right. and right. their skin read i don't want to i don't want to live past 100 <laughs> I you do know I, I do and i don't I, like if right i want to be healthy to, if i were to continue to live i'd want to be in an. i want i would want to be in an interface i'd want to upload mm -hmm. my subconscious into an interface okay because okay. ultimately that's all an interface would be right right yeah a, so, a soundboard a soundboard with with uh, with decisions, and if I trained a model to know exactly what my thoughts were going to be, 
based on certain stigma. But would it still be you, though? No, it would be my voice. But at the same time, would that be comforting to my future generations? Maybe. And say, and say you know, just, just ask the question. Like, if I would, instead of order, ordering burgers, ask Grandpa, ask six times Grandpa Chris. <laughs> Who we conveniently have yeah. right here. <laughs> We preserved him for four hundred years. I, I, that's so. It's so interesting to think about. Like right now, if if that was a true thing, like we could just talk to George Washington. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that would just be. Well, what's interesting is that at one point, well, so, so see, that's the thing too, right? I mean, obviously, he has a different viewpoint, right, on a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Would would his viewpoint? Could you could you transpose that viewpoint? to where it, it, it translates to current day issues. would you want to though you, i don't think i would no so, yeah i don't think I'd yeah, want see, to that's the thing too it's like i would love to live forever but i know that it wouldn't make sense right because it's like 400 years later they're like what do you think about this well i don't know can i can i use snapchat to see what this <laughs> outfit looks like on me <laughs> is my ootd looking fresh <laughs> <laughs> Do they still sell vagina scented incense? <laughs> Four hundred years later, you know. At that or, point, or at is that it point. a nanobot? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's what I was gonna say. And then the nanobot. Oh my gosh, this is getting too far down a rabbit hole. But the nanobot could be like, uh, you could take it from it, and then All it right. just constantly re reproduces that one smell. It's all about nanobots now. Oh gosh. We've started the we have started we have started the nanobot revolution. <laughs> They're coming. For us. That's very interesting. <laughs> all right, oh, guys. Man. Well I think that's our show. Oh you're welcome for that. Jeez, a minute an hour and six minutes of just pure chaos. Chaos for sure. Well, Joseph, do you, is there anything you want to plug? No, not not right now. No, you don't. You don't unplug um, your, your your Twitch channel. Your your, I your racing. Been, I don't your, get your League of Legends. You know, silver you, ranking. Uh, whoa! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, I'm iron. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not iron. I'm gold. I'm gold. That's at least. what I was talking about. At you least. need to correct the people. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean they could. If anybody wants to come watch me play on Twitch TV slash Erdo My Turtle, but I haven't been playing go. much because of school. So that's no, all right. You're becoming the but, future doctor. Yeah, uh, but you can go watch my wife at mismatch.e. There you go. Yeah. So she's she, a, uh, she streams pretty much daily when she's home. So Deadly de deadly Minecraft and Valorant. Yeah, assassin. a lot of Minecraft, a lot of Valorant. She's getting pretty good at Valorant, actually. I'm That's good. Pretty surprised. Not yeah, surprised. I'm, like, it's, it's nice I'm, to see. I'm trash at FPS, so. <laughs> You've always seen more like a, a storyteller... Uh, yeah, I'm all about Slower. the story. I'm all about the vibe. Yeah, you know that's why I like games like Detroit Become Human and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so. got you. I got you. But all right, brother. Well, cool. that's all we got for today. Don't forget to join the subreddit if you have not yes. already. Subreddit. I Down can't. Right I can't really point to it, but yeah, there. Well, you are. You just did. So you just, yeah. just point. look at our translucent fingers. Yeah, there you go. Mine is just mm. white. I'm just really white. That's all. I'm not. I'm really. I'm overlit. But if I don't, my green screen isn't lit. So. Oh. And you can you. That's the island. That's the. Uh, so some Philippine beach island or something back. There. Mm. We own it. Actually, that's where we film yeah, all of our that's, stuff. I would. That's I would be down island. Yeah, and you would be down to come because it's a blast. Yes, it's a, the island itself is called I would be island. <laughs> <laughs> and we have unlimited vagina scented uh, incense. <laughs> Yes, the, the the it's not really what you're seeing is a is a an illusion. The beach yeah. is really made of nanobots. <laughs> MRA, mRNA and nanobots. Oh my gosh, that's great. Everything we have is mRNA. There you all, go. All the, all the beverages. We don't have DNA anymore. It's just nope, all it's mRNA. All, it's all instruction sets that we ordered off of uh, off of <laughs> Amazon? Snapchat. Oh, Snapchat. Off of Snapchat that we found at local <laughs> shopping malls after the pandemic. Um, <laughs> Because we couldn't afford minimum wage. Great summary. Exactly. Great summary. I think so. So yeah, yeah. This, this was our people episode. I like it. So again, please uh, like, share, subscribe. Comment. Comment. Yeah. Yeah, we do like comments. So. We do. Talking to you, Austin. There we go. Austin. Appreciate <laughs> you, brother. We'll see you guys next time. 
Ma. Ma.